This episode is brought to you by the Insurgents Experience. The Insurgents Experience is a ministry mastermind mentoring program for kingdom leaders. This is different from my normal mentoring resource, which is the Deeper Christian Life Network. The Insurgents Experience is a one-year high-level mentoring mastermind for people who regularly teach and or preach. This would be lead pastors, traveling teachers, church planters, missionaries, those who teach in Bible colleges and in seminaries. At the time that I'm recording Recording this, I am working with 11 kingdom leaders, most of whom are lead pastors of churches who are in their 30s. If you're interested in the insurgents' experience and want to learn more about it, you can go to ministrymind.org, ministrymind, all one word, dot org. That will bring you to the insurgents' experience page. You could read all about it, and if it resonates, go ahead and apply. When registration opens, you will be contacted. Hi, fun seekers. Welcome to another edition of the Christ is All podcast. Today, I want to talk about spiritual fathers versus King Saul's. Now, if you're familiar with the Old Testament book of 1 Samuel, you are aware that there was a king whom God anointed after the people of Israel chose to have a king like all the other nations. And the first king of Israel was a man named Saul. And Saul was a very impressive human being. And in time, he discovered a young man named David, who slew the great giant of the Philistines. Saul then brought David into his court, made him a part of the family, the royal family. David was from Bethlehem, so this was like taking a young kid who lived out in a small town like Jasper, Indiana, and brought him right into the White House allowed him to marry the president's daughter, gave him a seat in the Oval Office, made him a leader of his military, and things were wonderful until two things happened. The adulation toward David exceeded that of Saul. David found himself being the subject of the number one song on the top 40, sung by girl bands all over Israel. He had his face on the cover of Time magazine, Newsweek, Charisma, Christianity Today, and Saul had none of these things. And this incited the furious jealousy of the king, and Saul was at this time being plagued by an evil spirit. David actually helped him with that through the music he played. Nevertheless, that spirit got the best of Saul. Jealousy was the ground by which it operated through him, and this once anointed king from God turned into a mad javelin throwing psychopath who attacked David on every front and tried to murder him. Now, that's King Saul, and there are, unfortunately, in the body of Christ, King Saul's. They have been in the Christian camp for a long, long time, and they still exist. And then there are the true spiritual fathers. And uh, Paul talks about being a spiritual father to both Timothy and Titus. He talks about being a spiritual father to the Corinthians, the Corinthian ecclesia. And so you have spiritual fathers and you have King Saul's. Now, both spiritual fathers and King Saul's bear spiritual sons. And I would even say spiritual daughters. But how they treat them differs drastically. A spiritual father does not necessarily have to be someone that brings a person to the Lord and then quote-unquote fathers them in Christ. It could simply be a mentor who has a mentee. 
so a mentor-mentee relationship. And here are the differences between the spiritual fathers and the King Sauls. And on my blog, I have many, many articles on this subject. At the time of this broadcast, I wrote an article about another spiritual giant passing. And this was one of my mentors and our relationship. And in that particular blog post, there is a list of articles linked at the bottom on this whole business of mentors, mentees, etc. And I'm going to add this podcast episode to that list. But if you want to read it, because this particular episode is by no means complete, I'm just shaving off an aspect of this issue of spiritual fathering and spiritual sons and daughters. The article is called Another Giant Has Gone Home and you can go to the blog frankviola.org and in the search window just type that in Another Giant Has Gone Home. You'll read about a recent mentor who has passed and then many articles on mentors, mentees, including one called My Feelings on Spiritual Fathers. But getting back to the King Saul's, here are the differences between the spiritual fathers and the King Saul's. Spiritual fathers cheer their sons on and desire that they succeed. And this would be true, too, of spiritual mothers and their spiritual daughters. However, I have only observed this dynamic of the King Saul (laughs) in men. I've never seen it in a woman. Not that it does not exist there. King Saul's, on the other hand, seek to undermine their sons out of jealousy. Spiritual fathers genuinely love and care for their sons. King Saul's only make use of their sons to further their own ministries. Spiritual fathers respect their sons. King Saul's despise their sons, even though outwardly they try to hide that. Spiritual fathers desire their sons to carry on their work and even improve upon it. King Saul's only want their sons to further their own legacies. Spiritual fathers are honest and hold their sons in high regard. King Saul's are mendacious. They dissemble and regularly demean their spiritual sons in the eyes of others. That about sums it up. Would to God that I never become a King Saul. Would to God that you never become a King Saul. And may the Lord raise up more Timothys, more Tituses, and more Davids. They are in short supply today. Now, I'm going to give you an illustration by contrast and comparison from the secular world, uh, two from the secular world, and then one from the Christian family. Now, those of you who are new to the podcast, I have to make this qualification, especially those of you who are older. So don't take your heart medicine out as I unravel these examples. But I'm going to use examples from the celebrity world. And this is not an endorsement. I will remind you that Paul of Tarsus, the great apostle, used pagan sources to make a point. And I'm going to do the same here. Now, I'm going to give you two sets of celebrities. Celebrity number one, Robin Williams and Jonathan Winters. Now, Jonathan Winters was quite a bit older than Robin Williams. Both of them were actors. Both of them were famous comedians to their own generations. Jonathan Winters was 26 years older than Robin Williams, and Robin Williams absolutely adored Jonathan Winters, even from a youngster. And his dream came true when they both appeared on a television show. And you can see interviews on YouTube, if you're so inclined, where Jonathan Winters and Robin Williams are being interviewed together. And it is so clear that Williams highly respected Winters. He saw him as a mentor. And Winters, here's the point, never appeared to be jealous of Robin Williams. 
he also had a respect for his mentee. The two men admired each other. And I look at that and I say, where is that in the Christian family? <laughs> that is rare, profoundly rare. And yet, as far as we know, these two men were non-Christians. I say as far as we know because we don't know what happened right before they died. Only the Lord knows that. But for all practical purposes, at least during their relationship, they were not serving Jesus Christ. And yet they had this mutual admiration, mutual respect, mutual love. And Robin Williams wrote a beautiful eulogy about Jonathan Winters when Winters passed away. Now, here's another example, again, from the secular world. Johnny Depp and Hunter S. Thompson. Now, both men were artists. Uh, in Depp's case, he still is. He is a remarkable actor that is hailed all over the world. And he is also a painter, and he is also a musician. Hunter S. Thompson was a well-known and highly regarded writer. And interestingly enough, there was a 26-year difference between Johnny Depp and Hunter S. Thompson, just as there was a 26-year difference between Robin Williams and Jonathan Winters. And even in that relationship between Depp and Hunter S. Thompson, they saw each other as brothers. And Depp held Hunter S. Thompson in awe. And they developed a close friendship, and they work together on projects. I'm not going to go through all the history. But the point is, there did not appear to be any jealousy on Hunter S. Thompson's part toward Depp, but only respect and love. And the same from Depp toward Hunter S. Thompson. And uh, when Thompson passed away, Johnny Depp honored him in a rather unique way. I won't get into the story, but he did something else. He wrote this beautiful preface or forward to one of Thompson's books. And it just was remarkable. Very eloquent. But the outstanding mark was how much he honored and loved Hunter S. Thompson. And that love came right back to Johnny Depp. Now, brothers and sisters, these are non-Christians. And neither Jonathan Winters nor... Hunter S. Thompson were King Saul's in the lives of their mentees. And yet, in the Christian family, this is very common. It's been common historically, even up to this good day. And it's tragic. Well, I'll end on a positive note. There is one example that I saw that ran against the tide. A man I greatly respect. I never met him. He passed away before I found his work. We'll call his name Devin. I don't want to mention his name. But very well-known Christian author, uh, someone who clearly knew the Lord, had a beautiful walk with him, and was respected in many quarters. Well, he had a mentee who was 22 years his junior. And this mentee turned into a prominent author. We'll call his name Josh. I don't want to mention his name. And I spoke to Josh by phone about Devin and their relationship, and it was just unbelievable. Because all Josh did in that phone call is he would talk about Devin. Devin this, Devin that. And before Devin passed away, Josh held a conference where Devin was the main speaker. And Josh also spoke, and they talked together in some informal sessions that were recorded. Josh would ask Devin questions. There was humor coming from both of them. You can tell these men really loved each other and respected one another. There was no hint of jealousy coming from Devin toward Josh. And this was in the Christian tribe. These were two believers. Devin was, in fact, a spiritual father, not a King Saul. So I end by saying... If you're someone in your 20s and 30s, and especially you feel a call from the Lord, seek out a mentor, someone who's been through blood up to the horse's bit, someone who has a revelation of Christ that goes beyond the shallow, someone who can preach down heaven and cause people's eyes to be open to see the Lord, someone who understands God's eternal purpose, who really gets it, 
and lives for it, by it, and through it, and seeks to declare it, and seek them out. And if you're someone who's older, pass this on to the younger generation, would you? Serious Christians, let's get this word out about the importance of mentees and mentors. And may God keep us from being King Saul's in the lives of spiritual sons and daughters and make us spiritual fathers. Thanks for listening. Hey guys, this is a postscript just before you head out and we part ways. I have created a bundle of free resources. This would include my other podcasts, the YouTube channel, several free ebooks, free seminars, and other free resources. And you can find all of that at frankviola.com. And if you go to frankviola.com, you will see in the top menu a link that says free stuff. You just click on that and you will be taken to the free resources page. Also, a number of you have asked if you could donate to help defray the costs of the podcasts and also to express appreciation for the value that you've been receiving. You're under no obligation to donate. I don't ask for donations, but should you have it on your heart to do so, you can go to frankviola.us. That's frankviola.us. And that will take you to a donate page. There's three different options you can use to donate, all of them simple. Thank you very much, and God bless.